I'm back. I'm excited. I'm so excited to be starting to make videos again. The last few months have been absolutely wild and I just haven't had the time to do this and I'm so glad that I will be able to get back in the swing of things. It definitely has been a struggle to get back to reality, honestly, and back to a normal healthy schedule and I am, I am so excited to do so. This video I actually really wanted to get it posted last week, but it just didn't happen. So I'm excited for it to be posted. It's not a super long video. This video is, of course, Valentine's Day themed because Valentine's Day is literally right around the corner. It's on Monday, which is super exciting. I'm hosting a Valentine's Day party for me and all my friends, and it's going to be so much fun. I'll be wearing the dress to this uh, event. Um, so that's why I have to get it done because my party is on Sunday. So we are going to be doing a very easy, quick, last minute Valentine's Day sweater dress. And it's super cute. I have the sketch right here. It's this one right in the middle. It's adorable. But you also can see it right here. And we are going to get straight to work. So what you will need for this, the first thing you'll need is a basic block. If you do not know what a basic block is, please check out my video on basic blocks and such up right here in this corner. So this is, um, if you don't have a basic block, unfortunately showing you guys how to make a basic block by scratch would be a completely other video. So grab a tight shirt you have like this. This is a crop top. This is perfect. If you don't have something that looks like this, you can use a t-shirt. You'll just be measuring your waist and you'll take it in. You do need a front and a back. So trace the front from all the seams. So this one, the shoulder is a little small here, so you will end up needing to extend it out and kind of bring it in um, because we'll be attaching sleeves. So you'll want to make sure you measure your shoulder right here from the base of your neck to the, your end of the shoulder, and that's how wide it should be. It's a super easy fix. All you do is extend it out, and you can just guess the curve. It's not that big of a deal especially since we'll be using knit fabric again this project is for knit fabric if you are going to be using a woven it will not work please get a knit fabric it's all oh, your back you want to say hi pinky hi pinky <laughs> you want to know how to drape a basic block you can check out my video on a draping a basic block however you do need a dress form in order to do that so it is in the cards but let us get ready. Um, I actually still need to post the back of that draping the bodice block. <laughs> so that will be the next video and I will tag it up here when it comes out. All right, so let's talk materials. So for this, of course, you will need the pattern that I will be showing you how to make momentarily, but you are also going to need some cute Valentine's Day themed fabric. I have this adorable knit fabric. It's pink and fuzzy and absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, you will need a knit. This is a knit sweater dress. It will not work with a woven, so please find yourself a cute Valentine's Day knit. You will also need some buttons. I found these really cute swan buttons on Etsy. Here they are. They're so adorable. They're so pretty. Uh, they took forever to get here, so if you want to use these buttons, they will not come in time, but you can always use another Valentine's Day button and then switch out the buttons later if you so choose to do. But these ones are absolutely gorgeous and they're gonna look so cute on my pink fabric. So I'm super excited. And then you will also need a sleeve pattern, the basic block, um, and you will need uh, strips of fabric as well for the uh, turtleneck and then the placket that we'll be sewing the buttons on. Um, make sure you also need some interfacing. Uh, you'll need like stretchy interfacing. If you go to the fabric store and you ask for stretchy interfacing, they will show you the right thing to get. So this is the uh, rough draft of the front and back uh, pattern. So you're gonna wanna measure your hip, your waist, and your bust first. And then also you want to trace down your bodice block on one half of the paper. You only need to make one half because we're gonna be cutting this out on the fold of your fabric. So once you get those measurements measured, you're gonna cut them in half and then you're going to cut them again so it's a fourth of what the measurement should be. Your hip measurement should be bigger than 
or your back hip measurement should be bigger than your front hip measurement and your waist measurement should be relatively the same. Here you see that I have all my measurements written down so you can kind of gauge and see um, what it is going to look like. I also have my length of my skirt and that is 16 inches. This does not have any seam allowance so in the end we will be adding seam allowance. So obviously you don't, your hips are not that pointy, so you're going to round them out. I ended up having to take my hips in about an inch, so you will have to as well. This is a knit, so it is going to stretch, so make sure you take it in accordingly. If you wanted to do a mock-up like I did, you can go ahead, or if you just wanted to leave the seams like that and just take them in as you needed to, that is okay too, because as I always say, it is much easier to take things in than it is to take things out. On the front, you will notice that I have a little rectangle right in the middle. You will need to do that as well. That is where we will be putting the buttons, the placket to put the buttons. Um, so make sure you, mine is I think 12 and a half inches. So my whole placket with seam allowance is like 14 and a half inches. And now I will explain why the back looks so goofy. So your back is not straight. So that is why this looks goofy. I have it marked the original. You can see is the one on the outside and then the one I took in I had to take my back in four inches along my waist so you need to remember that your back isn't flat so you either need to take it in right on the side which I do recommend because we are using a knit but if you're using a thicker knit like I am and you are worried about just ripping off all that fabric you can go ahead and leave it the bigger size and when you try it on you can easily just do a fish eye dart in the back that is literally just a really long dart going up your back and your butt. All right, so once you have it all patterned out, you can go ahead and cut it out. You're going to cut it out on the fold of your fabric, both pieces. Um, I had my fabric in two pieces, so so yeah, just cut it out on the fold. So now we're going to make the placket. So you're going to draw the middle of your placket. Mine is a whole inch. So as you can see here, I am marking a whole inch using my gridded ruler. Now you want to do the sides. And because you, again, it is an inch. So your sides need to be two inches and plus seam allowance. So it's two and a half inches. Just mark that all the way around and you cut out. Leave. You want to make sure that you do mark the middle like you see here. Also, I am extending extending it out an inch on the bottom and I'm leaving half an inch on top for seam allowance. All right, so go ahead and fuse your interfacing to the placket or the middle part where you're putting the buttons onto your dress. So once you get that done, you're going to sew your sleeves together, so your shoulder seams, and then we're going to sew on. So now we're gonna sew on the neck piece. So all you're gonna do is fold it wrong sides together so the right side of your fabric is facing out, and then you're going to fold it in half, find the middle, and on the right side of your fabric, you're going to sew it down. Make sure you finish those seams. My serger is still broken, so I'll be using my pinking shears for this. Once you get your fabric um, all pinned out, just pin it, start pinning it to the fabric, and then sew it at the seam allowance. Now that we have that uh, neck band on, we can put on the placket. All right, so line up your placket face down on top of your fabric. Make sure the right sides are together. Here, it is wrong. I ended up accidentally sewing it down this way and had to fix it later. So make sure you sew it right sides together. Um, and then just simply line up your middle where you marked it on your pattern with the middle that you marked it on your placket. Then go ahead and sew down those lines you made with your ruler when you made the placket. Alright, now you're just going to cut down straight the middle where you were sewed in between and then you're going to slit those corners just like you see here. And now we're going to fold it in half right on your seam allowance just like you see here. Now I'm going to reduce the bulk because it was getting a little bulky. I am just simply cutting halfway through only one layer of the seam allowance as you can see that one of the layers on the front is still longer. Now you're just going to fold it in half and pin it down and then you're going to rotate it to the back and you're going to top stitch around. This is where I realized I screwed up and had to take it off and re-sew it. 
Now that I have corrected my big mistake, you can see here that I am rotating it to the back. You're going to have to, as well, you're going to shove the end of that in the back. You're going to have to finagle it a little bit um, and kind of play with it so it lays right. It should lay one over top, just like you see here. I'll give you a close-up momentarily. Um, but it should lay right over top of each other, just like this and then you're going to take those pins out and you're going to put them in the front and then you're going to stop stitch all the way around once you get that top stitched all you're going to do is mark where you're going to put your buttons if you have fabric like mine and it's like this really cute fuzzy stuff you're not going to be able to put buttonholes in it it's very difficult I ended up using hook and eyes right on the end, which I will show you at the end of this video. Um, but I just used the decorative buttons on top. Uh, you can either use hook and eyes or snaps. I was going to use snaps and I couldn't find them. So I ended up using hook and eyes. All right, so now we're going to attach the sleeves. So just attach the sleeves again, right side together. Don't do what I'm doing right here. You want to start from the middle. I knit it up. Yep, there we go. I folded it in half, marked the middle, and then just put it in the middle there and pinned it all the way around and sew it up. All right, now we can do the last thing, and you're going to fold it in half, and you're going to start it at the bottom of your dress, and you are going to sew it all the way up to the very tip of your sleeve. This is the most easiest way to apply any sleeve and it is also my favorite. So once you get that all pinned down, simply just sew one complete straight line and then you can hem it up and you're all done. All right, and here is the finished product. Super cute. I am very excited with how it turned out. I hope you guys share with me how yours turned out. Let me know. Look how cute these buttons are. I mean, seriously, I'm in love with these buttons. Also, here's what my hook and eyes look like. See, right on the end of the placket. Just sewed them on. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button, and show me you guys' dress. I know that was not right, but it's fine. Um, also, happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day, and I will see you guys all very soon.